so we've offered that to you guys as a starting point for conversation and debate and thought. Um, and so where we go from here um, will depend a lot of on what we hear from you guys tonight and what we're receiving. There's been lots of comments that have been, uh, been given to us online and we're grateful <laughs> for the people who took the time to do that. Um, that's certainly another form of modern communication and we're grateful for that. So tonight is, a, um, is just an opportunity for us to hear from you. And look, I, I, we fully expect uh, there to be passion in the room, um, and, uh, and that's good. Um, we just ask that you be respectful, okay? Um, we're going to give you time, uh, plenty of time to talk. Brett's going to set some, some ground rules for what we're trying to do. There's plenty of people here tonight. I don't know how many of you actually want to talk, but if you do, we want to make sure you've got time to do that. So uh, we'll try to set some ground rules and, uh, and make this as efficient a night as possible, but our... Our only hope is to listen to you. That's why we're here tonight. We're here to take notes and to listen to you. Eventually, the city council will deal with this. And when we were all elected and sworn in, one of the first things that I did was form this task force because I believe that this is a subject that we need a good decision on. And uh, the city, we've been kind of kicking the can down the road for a while, and it's just time for us to have a philosophy as a city. And so we'll, at some point in time, we'll have a great debate about this, and we'll come up with a decision on it. But we're not going to do that until we hear from all of y'all. So that's why we're here tonight, okay? So thank you for coming. And, uh, and, and I'm going to introduce Brett Smith, who's going to introduce the rest of this task force. But thank all y'all for being here, okay? Good evening, everybody. Can everybody hear me in the back? Everybody hear me? Great. Uh, thank you for everyone showing up tonight. Um, we uh, to Quickly, the mayor has tasked us from the very beginning of when we were sworn in on the uh, short-term rentals. We have two, two members, uh, short-term rentals, homestays, however you want to define that. Um, and we may actually discuss that tonight about the, how we define it. Um, the mayor has asked, uh, this originally started as a two member, two council member, myself and uh, council member Bob Parsons. Uh, well, we expanded that and wanted to introduce that to, uh, we've added two members from planning commission, uh, Marcus Marshall and Bob Rickenbach. Uh, Bob's not here this evening or may be coming late. Um, traffic was, uh, we have a traffic issue in town. I don't know if anyone else has noticed. <laughs> Took me a minute to get over here. That's why I was a little bit late. Uh, or right on time, as they say, so I was late. Um, and so with that, our entire approach, and we may talk more about adding additional stakeholders to the task force as well, but our initial approach line in laws and the rest of the planning uh, department was the prior council, the planning department had prepared an ordinance. Has everybody had an opportunity? There are copies of, this one stand up. There's copies of the ordinance in the back. Does everyone have a copy of that? Is everybody, is everybody aware that we've got the proposed ordinance that's been published online that you can go to, you can review, and then add commentary on that? Is everybody aware of that? Um, so the approach that we took is we didn't want to we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. We didn't want to start fresh. We wanted to start with where we had gotten. Kind of, we had a previous meeting uh, last year, late last year, where we met with uh, city staff and discussed, kind of flipped this ordinance on the head asked a bunch of questions, kind of where we got and how we got to the point that we did. Um, got a lot of stuff answered. I've got edu I personally got educated on what we have. And, and uh, Mr. Uh, Cotton is here, Forrest Cotton is here from planning to answer questions, any specifics maybe about the ordinance tonight. Um, and so the idea was to then publish that ordinance and have this meeting. The entire point of this meeting is to get public input. Um, and with that, it, we've got this meeting notice from 5.30 to 6.30. I think we're thinking very, that's, that's very optimistic of us at 6.30. But we're here to take comments tonight on this ordinance. Um, the main thing I'd like to do is, this is a, this, our attempt at this is to, because this specific, the specific homestay is one of those things where it's not about, are we going to have a certain type of industry in a certain area of town? This is a business that's going to be in our neighborhoods, and our neighborhoods are our homes are our most personal aspects of where we live. It's where we live, it's where we come home, and so that's why we want to get as much input as we can on this particular ordinance and where we're heading as a city. In saying that, I would like to see that we, if we're going to take input, we'd like to limit that to a minute and a half. Um, you know, right around that area. Um, this is a crowdsourcing event. We're trying to get as much input as we can, which means. We want to have differences of opinions on where and how we're heading and what we're doing. <laughs> With that, I'd like to I'd like to have zero crosstalk. Uh, I would like, if you will, address if you want to, if someone brings up a point, 
let's we can talk about that at a, another person can bring up a counterpoint to that. But this is nothing personal. There's no ad hominem attacks. Um, I don't. That's not going to happen. I'm just laying that out. If, if it gets that way, you're going to have to just forfeit your time because that's not what we're here for. We're here to be productive. We're not here to to, to get personal or anything like that. Um, let me see if I've nailed, nailed anything else, Bob? I'm random um, here. No, you, that's great. Um, the only thing that I would add is um, we're just using this document mm -hmm. as, as a starting point um, without any particular bias towards any of it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a point from where we can begin a conversation. And uh, our job, as I see it, is to represent your views. And... So I'm not coming here with any particular notion of how it's going to look. I'm, I think both of us are here to, to absolutely listen to your opinion and to represent that accordingly. And, and to kind of give you a procedural idea of here, based off of what we're going to input, when me and uh, we spoke about this earlier today, we're going to take an input from this point. Um, likely, if, the, if there's some proposed changes to the ordinance, we will publish that ordinance again we we'll then take input again. It's likely we will have another public input, input hearing similar to this once we have a revised ordinance. It's my understanding procedurally that that ordinance will then go to planning, not planning department, but planning commission to be voted on. There will be a public hearing at planning commission on this ordinance. And then if it once voted on in planning commission, it will then go uh, before city council. So at minimum, we're looking at probably three more uh, public hearings on this particular ordinance, just to let you know. In case you know some neighbors that weren't able to make it tonight, uh, we're always accessible. To, uh, our, me and Bob had spoke on, we're going to have a good record here. Bob's recording tonight's meeting. Um, we've got, he recorded the, uh, the input meeting, the introductory meeting that we had. Uh, we'll have all the comments. We're going to redact the names from the comments that we've received, but we're going to publish those as well. We're hoping to produce a, uh, a substantial record so when we come to a decision and it gets voted on, you'll be able to see exactly how we got to that decision um, to, to produce the best record that we can. Um, so we'll, uh, that, that's procedural and we, we can get started. We've got a microphone up here. I think the room may be big enough that you can probably stand and ask your question. Uh, but like I said, we're going to try to limit that to about a minute and a half to two minutes of questions or comments. Uh, and then we'll we'll get started. So with that, I will take my seat. Don't be shy, y'all. <laughs> is this citywide? Or what is the scope, the area of this ordinance? So, it, if you look, enforcement talk specifically on the the current the question was regarding where this would be. This would be within city limits, but there would be a restriction based on uh, if you look at section paragraph fourteen a. Fourteen A establishes where homestays can be uh, under this ordinance, where they would be allowed. Do you have a map of that that shows what the areas are? I don't have a map. It's, it's essentially the the city limits and it's essentially the city limits. yeah, and it's zoned accordingly. So you, if uh, if you're unsure of um, the zoning of your neighborhood, your street, you can find that information on the Auburn City website. If you uh, search maps, you will find uh, a pretty, a pretty handily interactive uh, uh, map of the city that will break down um, what particular zone it is you're, you're in. But yes, this this ordinance covers the city of Auburn. True. Yeah. Well, that's all right. Sure. Good evening, my name is Drew Goodner. Um, you asked what kind of, where this covers, and if you look at those zones, I'm not sure where you live, but in my opinion, there are very few people who have a primary residence in the urban core or any of those urban neighborhoods. There's maybe a few in the RDB and CDD, but the urban neighborhoods and the urban core, that's very downtown proper. Um, neighborhood conservation starts at Payne Street, it kind of ends near Amsterdam, um, and then neighborhood conservation starts probably where a little bit past the depot. So that downtown area is mostly student rentals. Um, you don't have many families that live there. I used to live there, but um, we moved. I mean, not many people 
live in that area, you might have some condos, that type of thing. So if you don't live in that area, as this is written, they are not allowed. I think this ordinance as written effectively kills them in all. Um, if you own property in that area, I have, an, I have a short term rental on Payne Street. It would not be allowed as presented. That's neighborhood conservation. I also have them on um, in downtown Auburn on College Street. They are not owner occupied. So as this is written, I could only do that for 30 days a year, which makes the, that makes no sense. You're not going to have a property that you say, okay, for 11 months out of the year, I'm either not going to rent it or I'm going to rent it to someone and tell them they have to move out for these 30 days. Um, I think it needs to be expanded and allowed in other areas. I think maybe with conservation, I think that there's a lot of people I've talked about about this that have them. Most of them are in the neighborhood conservation areas. And it's people from my age, it's people much older than me. But it's all kinds of people. It's people who use them as rental property. It's people who help support their mortgage. It's people who couldn't pay their mortgage otherwise. It's people who bought them specifically for this. I don't know what the negative connotation about it is. I use them a lot when I travel. Um, when you travel with a family, it's great to have. Mine on Payne Street, I've got a husband and wife right now and their dog. They stay there for two or three weeks. They're respectful people. He's a radiologist. Don't cause any issues. As far as I know, I've had one police complaint in five years since owning it. Um, that was at eight o'clock at night. You know, some girls were being loud and dad told them, okay, y'all go on out. I think it's a great thing. I think the city needs to tax it, come up with a way to regulate it, but they need to be allowed in other areas besides these few zones where people really don't live as a primary residence. Um, if the zone, if the purpose of it is to get rid of them, then that's what this zone does, in my opinion. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'd like to second that. My name's Ray Horns. I live in a, currently with, with this draft, it would, it would kill my my game day house i've been doing this since 2007. Uh, and just to kind of give you some numbers right now currently on airbnb and vrbo there are 118 homes listed for the auburn georgia game which is going to be this year 2019. by the time june and august get here there'll be three or four hundred homes so my suggestion is 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 open it up to to uh to every zone, let HOAs determine if they want it in the neighborhood or not. And to give the city some, just kind of some revenue ideas, that at, right now of those 118 homes, the average rental price is $600 a day. There's some that are cheaper, but it's an average $600 a day. If the city had a license fee for people who want to do it, that's in this proposal, and they collected a lodging tax, they would roughly, right now on that day, pull anywhere from thirteen dollars to $14,000 a weekend. And two things that does, with the current proposal, if you eliminate that and leave it like it is as written, is that where are people going to go when they come to games and graduations? I've been doing this for a long time, and, and, and they're going to go out of town. Their revenue is spent out of town. Their revenue is not here. Their tax dollars are not here. Second is when you're collecting taxes on this, which I think everybody that's doing it wants to kind of do it legally and wants it to be right. I'm willing to pay a tax. I want a condo in Panama City Beach, so there's a lot. They have a lot of uh, history in, in this process. Anybody that's ever rented my house, we make them send a drop copy of their driver's license. They're never under the age of 25. They're always families. Uh, I've never had a, I've never had an issue with uh, police being called to my house, and I'm trying to make this quick as possible and hit on all points. There's two minutes is pretty tough. Um, but I feel like the city is if, the, if this is passed they're gonna uh, they're gonna miss a lot of revenue opportunities and second when when the people of this city are kind of in their own little entrepreneurs and making money that money comes back into this town so to me from a business standpoint it is a it's a win-win not only for the city and, and tax dollars but also for the citizens of the city but I think by saying the HOAs ought to be able to want to make a decision whether their neighborhood should do this, I think that leaves it to the HO and keeps government out of it. And uh, I appreciate y'all listening to me. So I appreciate you. This is Shannon. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just wanted to make two quick points. One is that I'm actually laughing. Uh, one is that it depends entirely on how it's managed. I, I have a property in North Georgia that I've done for a couple of years on VRBO. Allow pets have not had the first problem. You just have to do extreme bedding on the front end. 
Uh, the other point I'd like to make is that MCs are not homogenous. <laughs> I think outside the loop is a totally different MC neighborhood than inside the loop, generally speaking. <coughs> and uh, they're just not all, all the same. And I, I would hope, I'd make a plea for at least making it conditional. Uh, and I'll give my property as an example. It's on Sanford Avenue. And um, there's parking for 11. <laughs> paved parking for 11 cars because we parked cars there for football games before. Uh, when you are in the house and you look this way, you cannot see anything. You can't see the house next door. It's woods and a creek. You know, when you look this way, you can't see the house next door. When you look behind, you can't see. So it's not like we're, you know, encroaching upon neighbors or anything. Um, I just think it's a, a great opportunity for people like my daughter, who is a single mother with two kids in college, to make a little extra income and help the city too. Are you under an HOA? No. No, this is Sanford Avenue. So okay. The HOAs are all, you know, that's what I mean by the loop. Most of them are, it's already been decided, you know, but we're like four lots from um, the zoning that we could be doing this. We're very close to it. Close in. Yes, Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hey, I'm Susan Bolt, and I um, have uh, Airbnb, I do Airbnb, and with this ordinance like it's written, in my opinion, it's too restrictive. I know y'all have a restriction on there of six adults. Well, I have a, I have a house that has five bedrooms, and it will sleep 12 people. And that, it's not a party house. In fact, I have an agreement that it is, no parties are allowed. But most of the experiences that the people that come to my house are, for instance, they came for Thanksgiving. And while we were gone elsewhere for Thanksgiving, they celebrated in a family setting, and everybody was very comfortable. They had a lot of good things to say about it. But while I do game day, I also, I'm surprised at the other people that come because we see people, for instance, that are coming in for a swing group with Auburn University this next weekend. Well, that is something that they, they're not gonna go to a hotel and get the same experience. But when they come, I can direct them to restaurants. They have pizza delivered in. So it, it does generate a second flow of income as well because they're spending money here. But um, like I say, I think it's too restrictive. My house will sleep 12 people in beds, not piled up anywhere. There's plenty of room. My parking is taken care of. Um, I want my house taken care of. So. I've been so pleased. It's and what I see is people coming in to be with their families, um, so that the sons and that that have adult married, you know, children, they can bring their family in and everything. So I just think this is too restrictive. And the zoning, the way it is right now, it would knock me out. But I can guarantee you, my neighbors, that we're not doing anything different that they would know about. They just see different cars. But I limit the cars, so. I've not had any problems, but as Sheila said, if you bet it on the front end, and I know Airbnb helps do that as well, so I would like to see the restrictions lessened and let people come in and enjoy Auburn, because that's what they're doing. Uh, is your, the home that you're in, that is each your primary residence? Yes. It is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and that was another thing somebody mentioned when they came in, they said it's not just a place to stay, it's, it's <coughs> So the, the, the definition at the very front, I'm Brett, I'm Ron Coppa, by the way. Yeah, hey, Ron. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Does this preclude homes that are not primary residents being, I mean, is, I have a home on Chihuahua in the same situation, and I bought it specifically for a game day rental. Um, the realtor never told me that I was getting into a controversial situation, so absence of knowledge of law, I guess, put that on me. But, um, you know, we enhanced that house, we've, uh, we've invested in that house. I think that house is an attribute to the, to the, uh, to the neighborhood. Um, Airbnb does that and does preclude people and it's a, it's a, it's a self-disciplined uh, uh, system on the star system. Um, but homes that are your, not your primary residence that are specific for Airbnb, for this regulation I, I see would be precluded. Um, They're precluded, you're zoning. 
And so that's precluded. Yeah, but that's if you happen to live downtown and it wasn't your primary, you went into 30 days. Okay. So so you're I fall into you're your double category. precluded. I'm double yeah. precluded. <laughs> now, the double other thing I'd like to say is, you know, you talk about football. Um, I've had artists stay there. I've had Korean businessmen stay there. I've got it rented out for graduation. I had a graduation last year with two grandmothers. There, were, there was a lot of partying and, and throwing of beer bottles. Um, I've got parking for eight. Um, we maintain that property. And, and again, I just think uh, Auburn is missing out from a Chamber of Commerce situation. The comments written in, in our book about walking the neighborhoods, what a wonderful town Auburn is. Going up to Amsterdam and having dinner, going out to Grand National and playing golf. I mean, there's a revenue chamber of com commerce opportunity here that I think we're we're, we're kind of missing. For, for, do you do y'all use Airbnb? Everybody that I do predominantly. Okay. We are, we are, we are, yeah. Okay. So for Airbnb, for Airbnb users, what is the vetting? Can some, would somebody give me an idea what the vetting process is for? Yeah, well, Airbnb, you've got to go on and my name's Robert Hutchinson, by okay. the way. Thanks, um, yeah, I've, I've been using Airbnb for <coughs> since it's existed, roughly. I use it all over the country. I'm a businessman. I travel. Um, I own residences in multiple states. So for me, um, you, when you go on, you've got to give them your driver's license. They do a background check on you. They verify your phone. They verify your Is that your for you as the lister? As, no, me no, as, the, as, the, as, 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 the, as the as the as the traveler. Okay, That's right. As a traveler. And then and then I get rated. Mm -hmm. Okay, so every place I stay, there's a comment section. There's a rating section. If anything I did wrong to the property, I you know anything like that gets on there. So. You know, you work pretty hard to make. Well, you don't have to work hard if you're a decent guy, but you just get five stars, and 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 then you know they kind of know who you are. And if you ever have any sort of dispute over a broken piece of furniture or whatever, um, Airbnb has a mechanism for handling that internally, so it doesn't turn into a you know legal situation or anything like that. So I mean, they do a pretty good job of vetting you, and and you can tell if you. We also have the, as the lister, we have the choice of who comes in um, within relative guidelines. They don't discriminate in any uh, way, you know, uh, sex, sexual orientation, you know, ethnic background. We don't discriminate in that manner, but you can discriminate based upon a person's age or the size of the group that's coming in because you can limit the size, you know. I happen to have a 4,000 square foot house here in Auburn, so Again, six adults would be restricted to the kind of income that I could generate off of that. Um, that being said, I'm not going to host a party of 10 or 20, probably, unless I really have a good idea if it's a family coming in or multiple families getting together for the holidays. So I've used this service all over, and as a traveler, I find it, um, I, I use it over hotels. I prefer it. I've spent many nights in the Hampton Inn in my and I don't really like to do it anymore. <laughs> so, <clears throat> you know, and, and it enhances your experience of the city. You know, I mean, that's one reason I live in Auburn. When I first moved to Alabama, I lived in Birmingham. I just landed in Birmingham. And uh, I could live anywhere in the state that I wanted, and I chose Auburn after I drove around for a while. So, um, you know, and I also stayed at several places here in Auburn. So, so there's a vetting process on the on you as the particular renter or, right. or the traveler, right? And, and a rating system, a yep. vetting process and a rating system. And the same thing for you as a lister. As a lister, there's a rating process and, and a vetting and a vetting process. Mm -hmm. okay. And so, what, like, so when you're going, okay. Yeah. What about what about VRBO? VRBO does the same, and they're they're vetting both parties as well I mean, with a background check as well. I, I can't speak to if they actually do a background check. I don't know. Well, airport. Airbnb, they do, I, my understanding um, is that, well, they used to, uh, I, I don't know if it still happens, but they can, um, you sign off on a box that they can look into your, into your background to see if you're a registered sex offender or to see if uh, any of those types of things are an issue. It, it seems like to me it's adults being adults, you know, yeah. no matter the age. I mean, everybody wants that good rating. So you're going to behave and take care of property and vice versa. I've, I've both stayed in Airbnb's and, and host, and I love it. Whether the people are at home or whether they're not, whether you stay with or not. Yeah. Oh, that current draft.
I'm sorry. Yeah, no, 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 that's on number nine on page two. You know, that would have to be eliminated off the draft too. Because the way I read that, that you wouldn't be able to list it on Airbnb because it would give the address and it would be advertised. Well, we, and that would just draft. That. I'm just saying. This is more on site. This tracks the length of that right for us regarding. Uh, no advertising material. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, what you see that's not underlined, that's all existing regulation. So what the, the construct of this current version is that it would not be regulated as a primary use. It would actually be regulated as a home occupation. And so what you see in that section that's not underlined are existing regulations that apply to home occupations now. So if you're a business what, what I've heard many of you say, well, the few that have spoke, I think almost all of you universally have said what you're interested in is basically having a construct or at least an additional use type where the residence does not have to be a primary residence necessarily. And there are certainly many, many examples of that, and I'm very familiar with those. So, so if it is, though, does that cover what, that? If it what is a I don't want anyone to be under the mis misimpression of is there was no, um, there was no effort, no desire by the staff. This is I do want you to understand. This was deemed to be a starting point. We wanted to get something out there, get the exact reaction and response that we're getting tonight. And obviously, <coughs> this is being done at the direction of, of our two council members, but the staff is certainly going to put together what is what we're tasked to put together. So we really wanted to start perhaps with something a little bit more conservative, see what the appetite from the community was to um, essentially provide, you know, be more permissive, get back with an alternative. I think I think the way it's been described is exactly correct to have multiple opportunities for, to feedback make adjustments come back do that again and ultimately get where uh, you know at least where there's the most consensus um, that we can get before something actually moves forward to a to a, a vetting process with with the Planning Commission and ultimately the the City Council as has already been described and, and go to back to your question that, that in reference we discussed at the last meeting was that has to do with on-site advertising you couldn't construct like a yard, yard or yeah a yard with your business hours yeah. and this is that would be limited on it. that that's it falls in line with all our home occupation and i do think on page three i was going to bring a uh, number g that uh, not number g the letter g yeah, sorry, I'm on. Uh, <laughs> yeah the, the uh I mean, I don't think that's a bad idea to, if you had three complaints called in for a place that, that maybe that occupancy license or that that could be revoked for you, that I, I feel like that that's fair. Mm -hmm. You know, because you could, I mean, we all we all say I haven't had any problems, but, you know, and no, it's not a perfect world. You know, you just, so if that happened and, and three times, three strikes you're out, I think that's fair for the primary homeowner or however you're the homeowner or, or the property owner that hey, if this happens, then you know, we can revoke that for the next year or that year or however that may work. My only con my only concern there would be that um, there should be some provision for review because if you have somebody's got it in for you, you, yeah. you yeah. had somebody yeah. about it, they were opposed to it. They could just yeah. by simply yeah. complaining every time a car drove by. Uh, look, and let me ask a question. We've heard kind of one one side of this so far. <laughs> uh, I mean that's but the. What is it, and not from the, not, and I understand the economic aspect of it as a homeowner and your right, your property rights and your ability to, to make a, make some income. What is it in your mind or each of the people in the audience that are supportive is the difference, why is this a good product for our market? Um, you know, we have our hotels, we have our bed and breakfast. Um, I can speak. Uh, I can't do it. Yeah, I'm sure all of you. I'd mean, yeah, like to get something on the record. I've been renting my for six okay. years. Okay, tell me what. And I would say 90% of the people that have stayed in my house have told me if I didn't have your house to stay in, I'd be in either Montgomery or Columbus. Okay. There's nowhere to stay. And they have made it clear that we spend all our money here mm -hmm. because we stay here. If we didn't, we'd come in for the ball game, tailgate, and we'd be gone. Is it just availability with your unit, or is it something? I mean, is it's size. It's, it's family. Order. People would rather pay a thousand dollars. Oh, oh, sorry. Ray. No, it's, so the people would rather pay a thousand dollars to stay in the house for a weekend, where they can bring their parents, their kids go to school here. They can stay with them. Okay. Their grandkids. They have to go pay four hundred dollars and get have to get three rooms at a hotel, mm -hmm. and they'd rather be under one roof. Okay. But there's no where, where they can cook meals. No hotel, they have yards and all that. Yeah, kids have the yard. Yeah. 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 
Hi. My name is Crystal Garcia. Um, I'm also a professor at Auburn University, and we have an Airbnb for our home. Um, and we rent out like a suite, essentially just a room with a bathroom. And I think that that's kind of a different perspective from what you all what you all are discussing, and that it's a cost-effective option for individuals that are coming that can't afford the hotel costs in Auburn. Okay. Um, so ours is only listed for fifty-five dollars a night, um, which I mean you can't get a hotel for that that's nice and comfortable. Um, and so I think that it also offers that economic perspective for incoming individuals that may not be able to afford um, to stay in other hotels. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, just quickly, one of the reasons it's popular is people with young children, you can put them to bed, and then you, you would still be up and visiting, whereas in a hotel you can't do that. They're in their age. So it's very popular with younger families. Can, can I ask somebody, because I, I don't know anything about the app for real, so what does the, um, the person listing, how, how do you determine the rate? Do they you determine ahead of time and, and, every, and whoever wants this rate, first come, first serve, or do you, do you get a, you know, a, a potential person to come and then you choose the rate, negotiate the rate? How does that work on the app? You set the rate for your own property. You set the rate for your own property and then whoever, whoever, okay. They'll tell you if it's higher or low. Airbnb will. Okay. They'll, they'll let you know if things are running, if you lower your rate. Okay. We'll get more response. I'm having a hard time believing y'all don't know anything about Airbnb. <laughs> and you're drafting this doc. Yeah, I don't, well, that's, that's what uh, I want you to don't know input. anything about Airbnb? I know nothing about it. I, I, that's, well, that's there's there's been for the, so the, many the complaints thing. about this that y'all are draft proposing this regulation. I mean, what, what prompted this regulation? Well, we'd have to put something in place as to how to facilitate short-term stays. Our, our, currently, our ordinance and our law says that it has to be fall into long term, which would be over 180 days. So we're gonna. We, it's an issue that there, there's two sides. And the answer to go to your, to your question, we we received comments. I have received comments all over the place. I've received comments from folks who are concerned about neighborhood, neighborhood preservation. They're concerned about nuisance, uh, whether that's trash, uh, traffic, or noise. Okay, um, and and being that it's the it's, it's someone's neighborhood. That, you know, even people saying. I don't know, you know, I want to be aware of that when I move into a cul-de-sac. I want to know whether I've got, you know, whether I'm going to be living with people I'm going to meet or if it's going to be people coming in and out. Good or bad or in between, I'm saying that's been an issue. Secondly, I've heard people who, they're concerned about zoning. They're concerned about uh, limitations of zoning and where we're allowing it in the zoning. And then the, the, the third group has been, I, I like that, you know, I, I, I would like to acquire property um, that can be solely for short-term rentals. You know, I've, I've heard the example of the market sets a long-term rental. If I've got a three-bedroom, two-bath, depending on the house, it's going to be right at a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand, where I can make that in one weekend instead of over a month. So there's market influence there too. So well, there's the idea is we want to find a good consensus that that protects our neighborhoods. Or and I'm speaking on my on my as I've gone through this process, I want to protect our neighborhoods because that's where we live, that's where we come home, that's where we raise our children. Um, but I also would like to have the opportunity for people to, to, to have an economic drive, individuals to be able to make money. So, um, you know, I'm aware of everything. Your question is, how, why, you know, do you know anything about everything? We all know what it is. Yeah. But you go to a source as to who someone, I don't rent my house as Airbnb. There's people here that have. You've done it for six years, correct? Or that's, so you have more knowledge of me than me, I do. So that's why I want This is crowdsourcing. But have We're there been so experts. many complaints that it led to this? I mean, is there like an overwhelming well, how many, amount of how many, how many complaints would be so many? A lot to, to have a meeting like this and to draft. Well, you know, just like I said at the start of this, this, this is just a point, a point from where we can begin to craft an actual reasonable document that addresses everything. We have to start somewhere. It does look very restrictive, and, and I totally acknowledge that, but this is the document that we have to start with, and this is why we're here. We're hearing a lot of great response to this, and, and the general consensus seems to be that it's too restrictive, and we're hearing that, and we will react to that. Ma'am, somebody up in the back there. Yes, ma'am.
neighbors around here have no problem turning somebody <laughs> in if they think some new, if, if they're a nuisance. And those people that do things they shouldn't will probably not be allowed to do them for very long. But because of my experience in my house, I don't go out of town anymore and stay in a hotel. I go stay in somebody's house and, and I'm old, stay in a hotel. Yes, sir. I'm Gokowski. I'm going to swim upstream now. <laughs> um, I'm opposed to short-term rentals in residential neighborhoods. Uh, I think it's a slippery slope deciding which commercial activity you're going to allow in a neighborhood. Right now, they're zoned against in most neighborhoods in proximity to the city. So is a, a, a car repair next in the garage is a haircutting uh, barbershop going to be in somebody's spare bedroom? Pick which commercial activity you allow. So, but that being said, I mean, I want my neighbors to be neighbors. I don't want them to be revolving door itinerants. Um, that said, if you're going to do it, then level the playing field with hotels and with bed and breakfasts. There's the, you, you negated inspection that was lined out. There should be safety inspection. There should be food service inspection. Uh, you said, well, we'll put a fire extinguisher in. Hotels have to have fire suppression. So require fire suppression so it's a level playing field. Hotels pay a variety of taxes, occupancy taxes, uh, tourism taxes, sales taxes. That's not true on the short-term rentals. Um, you, you're wishy-washy on the parking. You got to have parking unless you don't have parking, and then you can park on the street. So, you know. <laughs> I got to pay taxes unless I don't feel like it, then I don't have to pay taxes. I mean, you got to level the playing field with what is uh, the competition. But as I said, I'm totally opposed to the residential neighborhoods, and uh, somebody described it as a ring. Okay, folks that live out in s suburban neighborhoods, they have HOAs. The older neighborhoods in proximity to town typically don't have HOAs. They've been around since the 30s, 40s, and 50s. So they'd have to establish an HOA, and, and uh, I, I just think, you know, level the playing field, keep it out of residential neighborhoods for the reasons that you stated, Brad. That that's where I come home to. That's where my kids are. That's where I walk my dog. So I want to be able to say hello to my neighbors, not to my neighbor today, who's a different neighbor next weekend. So that's my personal opinion. I, I would just oh. like to comment on leveling the playing field. If you go to the extent of putting fire suppression systems and all that stuff, all that will happen is all these units will be owned by large corporations that manage them. That is already happening in certain cities around the world, and I think it would defeat the entire purpose of, of what we're trying to accomplish. And as far as, I mean, I'm not saying, I would be, I would be open to some sort of inspection. I have, I have no problem with it, some sort of an inspection process. I have no problem with some sort of some of the reasonable things about Airbnb requires us to have a carbon monoxide tracker. They require us to have fire and safety facilities. They require us to teach people how to get in and out of the building. So those are things that are already in the Airbnb platform. So it wouldn't be anything different than we're already doing. I would just want to be careful about how we do this. I mean, if you and, it's, and speaking, I've lived in my house for. 18 months, and I've met my neighbor once. I have, I have, and what happened to me is I got another subdivision going in right across the street. So, you know, talk about noise and, and construction and everything else. So, the idea that that we're going to fundamentally change the neighborhoods by having this available to a certain group of people is, I think, I think. Not As a side not. note, I have not received one correspondence from any hotel in the city of Auburn, just for FYI. I don't know about you, Brett. They don't really provide the same service. No, but in terms of whether they whether they feel uh, that they need to contribute to it as, a, as a, it being a different type of accommodation in this city to a hotel. Kenneth, you wanted to speak. Uh, I wanted to say, uh, I, don't have, I don't have a short term. Um, but, you know, I believe the freedoms of this country are set up to where people have rights 
and private property rights and the ability to do whatever they want to on the, that property. Um, but the people that are around them have, have rights too that need to be protected and, and their property values and things need to be protected as well. Um, I believe that this ordinance is way too restrictive. I think it can be simply put that any place inside the city limits can have a rental and you lose your right to your uh, permit or whatever they, they set up for that if you, you do something wrong and, and you violate whatever rules and regulations that are there and the police are constantly being called out there and then you know the city steps in and removes that right or if um, you know the HOA, uh, HOA gets created in the neighborhood and they decide they don't want to have it. Um, you know, there's, there's multiple areas that neighborhoods can go and protect themselves and set up things to protect the neighborhood that they want to without the government getting involved, without the city having to write an ordinance to do it. Um, you know, we rely on the government for way too much in this country. Um, we need to just let people do what they want to do. And if they get out of hand, you know, you have mechanisms at the city to pull that back and you know, we don't need a three-page, you know, regulation on it. You know, it could be brought down to a couple paragraphs and let the free market and let the people and society dictate how that goes. Um, you know, we're all adults. You know, we're all out here trying to make a living and do, do the right thing. Nobody wants to, you know, hurt the property values. Nobody wants to degrade the neighborhood or anything like that or put anybody in danger that lives in the neighborhood. Um, you know, it would do a disservice to them and, and their property to do so. Um, I don't think that anybody that has a rental wants to do that or, or means to do that at all. Um, I just uh, think that the, the city needs to set up an ordinance and make it as le uh, least restrictive as possible. Let, let, let it run its course and, you know, in six years go back and look and say, oh, well, this is not working, or five years or three years, however long it takes and say, well, this isn't working, we need to change this or move this. But, you know, starting out at a high level like this is way too restrictive. And it, it's, it's, it's not a good thing. Um, and I also don't agree with not being able to sell firearms in that house. Which is another 13. Well, this is not Brad following me now. After 43 years of being a federal cop, state, local, everything else in the place. My concern is, someone explained to me that doing this business, what the, who's gonna collect the fees, who's gonna regulate it, and who is going to enforce, uh, who's doing the enforcement, and other considerations need to be considered as far as hiring additional uh, city code people, I would think, if this thing you know, catches on and the citizens decide that this is a good thing. Uh, I mean, do the VRBOs and the Airbnb, I mean, you're talking about people who want to do these things. The application fee is the city going to charge, I would hope, a sizable application fee, the same as this gentleman here said about the hotel taxes and the business occupancy tax and so forth. It should be, I would think, if, there, if someone's making $600 a day, I would think the city ought to be getting their fair share of the time if we allow this to go forward. Also, where's the enforcement mechanism? Who's gonna do it? Who's gonna pay for it? And where's the personnel? And the taxes? Is it, does the VRBO actually connect with the city on a database to where the city can go in and pull these up and see who the actual legitimate VRBOs are? And also, do they connect with the city? If the city doesn't have a database data entry person to keep track of this, or the fees, etc., then we that's a pretty large consideration as well. Airbnb, Air, Airbnb has a mechanism in which all the taxes are collected up front. They know what the taxes are by cities, by sections of cities, and they automate the process of sending the taxes, and it's completely audible. It is not. Yes, it is. No, it is not. Airbnb oh, collects 11% tax. The city of Auburn is in a zone for our lodging tax is 13%. I think I'm one of the few people that has a game day that pays the 2% directly to the Tourism Bureau. It is state law that dictates how much the taxes are.
by county, by district. Airbnb has a legal agreement with the city of Auburn and with the state of Alabama, and they collect those taxes on our behalf, but they do not collect that final 2%. Well, we can add that 2%. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I've got to swim upstream with Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Carolina Carr, 342 Payne Street. I'm the president of the Pine Bay. Payne Street, Pinedale, Hare Avenue uh, Neighborhood Association. It's not a you know, legal association, neighborhood group. And I received a number of phone calls from members of the neighborhood who feel very strongly about the issue, would like to see no uh, Airbnbs in neighborhood zoning, but said, you know, if there's a compromise, at least it should be at the permanent residence uh, and not this uh, business of renting out houses. Um, and quite frankly, I'm just going to tell you quickly what's happened to me with the house next door and so that I truly do understand these phone calls I'm getting. Uh, one time it was the incredibly profane frisbee game in the backyard of the house that if I'd had small children, I'd had to bring them inside. I mean, it was unbelievable. Um, this year there was the late afternoon barbecue party at which the volume of music was so loud my house shook. And I did contemplate calling the police, someone else did, and uh, took care of that, so I did not have to do that. Um, last year, it was being awakened at one o'clock in the morning by the most incredible piercing screams in which I literally thought someone was being assaulted. This is not a joke. And it turned out it was the party next door, and when I jumped up and went and flipped on the back lights and threw up the window, I heard a person say, oh, maybe we better calm down. But that party was taking place 20 feet from my bedroom window. I mean, in the older part of town, those are small lots on Payne Street. And I, I was truly frightened when it happened. I thought somebody was being injured. Um, I did not call the police because they did calm down at that point. But let me tell you, being awakened at 1 o'clock with something like that was not something I would want to happen to anybody else. I get a lot of comments from neighbors saying they hate this business of the people, too many people in the house parking on the front lawn. It makes housing, you know, residences look bad. Uh, the beer bottles that are occasionally thrown out, especially the trash that's put out on the wrong day for trash collection and so forth. They said, you know, this is not being well regulated and it's making Payne Street look bad. And not just Payne Street. I mean, if, if people, I've gotten phone calls from people on hair and on podcasts. So I just want to say there are a lot of people that are very concerned about this and feel that at the very least it should be where there's somebody there that you can talk to as a neighbor about the issue and not just this house there that's being rented. Um, hey, the cat there. Sorry, Brent. Right, sorry. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'd like to say that. I'm called John. I run the uh, the Cotswolds, the Oaks, uh, HOA for three years, and we had multiple rentals in those three years. I never once had a complaint. Not one time. Not that I know of. I don't know that the law was ever called on anything. If I uh, have neighbors that actually rent theirs out. I have a three-year-old and I have a 12-year-old. <coughs> Never once had a problem with them. Never once felt like they would ever, you know, endangered by anybody of these homes. There's actually been media people in our neighborhood from the, that are, you know, working the games or whatever. Just wanted to, to kind of contradict a little bit of that is we've never had a complaint that I know of. And, uh, as far as I'm concerned, as far as taking the tax money, uh, taxes, whatever, you know, do your thing, take some of that revenue and help the hotels out with some of the costs that they have to do. That's all I got. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <clears throat> well, I'm Ernie Carlson. Uh, I've been a resident of Auburn for 43 years. I own a <coughs> business in town. I'm in favor of rewriting the ordinance to legitimize this business rather than making it something that's under the table. Um, I mean, let's let's realize we're not going to regulate. I mean, if we regulate it to where we restrict it, we're going to miss the revenue. Um, we're going to have businesses operating regardless of whether or not we have an ordinance to prevent it. You know, we're 
you're not going to police the whole thing and prevent it from happening. So let's legitimize the activity, bring it above board, the city benefits, the owner benefits. Yeah, to that point, so my name's Michael Golden. Um, I've been in the short-term rental industry as well for about five years. Um, I moved to Auburn two years ago, rent out my house on Stanford for game day and graduation, things like that. Make my mortgage in two days, you know, in the weekend. Um, but to your point, onerous regulation drives black market activity. If you look at Airbnb's two largest markets, it's Paris and New York City. New York City, it's <laughs> totally illegal. The short-term rentals are not, not legal at all. And in Paris, it's 30 days. Um, and Airbnb actually just bought a company in Paris that rents out properties full-time. So uh, onerous regulation drives black market activity. And you mentioned it earlier, um, the three issues that most of these things boil down to Parking, trash, and noise. Um, if it's game day, we have a problem with all of them anyway. We're a college town, right? Uh, but secondly, there, there's things you can do to, um, to balance that. Uh, you guys have some parking things in place. Maybe it's a car per bedroom. It's no more than two people per bedroom plus two, or if it's a room that has bunk beds or pull-out beds, things like that. Small children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's devices out there that can monitor noise levels. So if you're concerned about a party next door, um, I, in full disclosure, I work for the company. It's called Noise Aware. Um, <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, full disclosure. Right? <laughs> yeah, we never heard it. Set that right on in there. <laughs> but it's a device you plug in. If noise exceeds a threshold that you set at a certain hour, then you're going to know about it. And I, I went to this company, I, I got a job with this company after I heard about it because I think this should be in every single short term rental unit. I want to know if someone's throwing a party in my house. I don't want to disturb my neighbors, but more importantly, I don't want my house trashed, right? right. Yeah. So uh, you know, we all vet as best as we can. Uh, we also are as inclusive as possible with age restrictions. I don't let people under 21 or even 25 rent my house. Um, but we are a, uh, it's a property rights state, right? If you start putting too many restrictions on property, property values start to decrease. Um, San Diego recently banned short-term rentals within 30 days that was overturned and favorable regulations came about, uh, because there were, there were, uh, I think it was 80,000, not maybe that's not one that much. There's a ridiculous amount of homeowners that were gonna sell their house and, and get out um, because regulation was, was getting rid of it. Uh, people want to comply. You just have to put in a framework that people can comply, get a license, 200 bucks, put in you know certain guidelines, but past that, you, you've gotta be careful because People are just going to do things anyway, and, and without a without a task force or an enforcement policy, uh, it's going to happen, and that's going to cost you more to enforce it than the positive revenue you can get by not enforcing. Anybody? Uh, I'm just thinking of you know, <laughs> the Do you know there's a VRBO? Or, or the oh, we have some, fortunately, it's someone who lives within my neighborhood. <laughs> fair to oh, yeah. <laughs> but let's not Source. get into personal yeah. issues. I'm sorry, I can't. Regulator. I said, Man, we're having a hard time. process would be a good regulator to shut down some of the negative. You know, I've been doing it for five years. We've never had complaints, but I understand there are people who are not doing it well. Yeah. Don't pay taxes, and so if you if you have a complaint um, system where you look into that and you, you can actually, I think that would be a way to cut out a lot of the bad of that while still allowing the good to go on. Yeah, to piggyback on that, so a lot of places have a strike rule. Uh, Palm Springs, for example, 
this is a really hot button issue at every city hall. Um, it's a three strikes you're out rule with noise parties, etc. Um, and this sort of two rows in front of me mentioned it earlier that when you do that, then you could have neighbors that don't like it call in with complaints. Um, so you have to be careful with what you, you guideline there, but then uh, you know, there, there's ways to ensure that, uh, that those complaints are in fact real and accurate and not phony that are just trying to shut down the, the activity. Yes, sir. I'll let you go next. <laughs> the, um, the one thing I see about the regulations we have that you're proposing now is it paints everybody with the same brush. Whether it be a one bedroom over here or I have a house that uh, with a pool and a uh, miners, what he would shoot call, I buy a party house. Okay? I can uh, park 200 cars in my property. And I have had 700 people at my house for a party. Okay, so you can't really utilize the same regulations of what I do for for this lady over here. You're going to have to put some way to do that. And the party that I had was for my for my mother-in-law, so it's not that I rented it out for that. But uh, I I the regulation you had in there for six people. Uh, six people would get lost in my house on a, party, on a football weekend. Uh, and it, I noticed in the regulation it had both that you had to have be living there all the time and it had to be that you didn't live there all the time. I think it needs to be one way or the other. And come up with a regulation, but don't paint everybody with the same brush. Thanks, sir. Uh, that one more yes, sir, real quick. Yeah. So, with the current draft on the zoning, you asked a question earlier about how, how do we how do we price things? I think maybe you asked that. Well, let me supply and demand price things. Right now, we're in short supply. Even hotels are in short, short supply. But if you keep the current zoning regulations, I always ask myself common sense questions. Who does that benefit? If you're a, a, a property owner developer right now, and this passes currently like it is, I'd be building a damn hotel as soon as possible because there's a lot of supply fixing to roll out of this market and a lot of us not making any money anymore. So right now it's not written for us. It's, it, the law right now, this what's here is written for the hotels and these short-term rentals that are in this downtown loop area and they're not written for everybody. And, we, it, and the last thing I'll say about that is that to me, the Airbnb and VRBO or the Uber of, of the hotel market is that it's where it's going. And, and by the more you regulate it and the more you say we're not gonna do this, I think like what he said, people, how are you gonna stop it to some point? So make user-friendly rules, ones everybody can live by and pay their taxes and it benefits everybody, so thank you. Yes, yes ma'am. Um, I was gonna say, and I am one of the ones that has complained. And Horace can tell you I've had the largest complaint he's ever gotten because I had about 80 different people on my complaint. My complaint is I want the playing field level. I do have one of the game days that's zoned in the right area. Now having to have a having to live there would mess me up and the 30 days would mess me up. But I've had a business license to do this for the last three years. I've had the insurance for short-term rentals more expensive than homeowners. I have paid the 13% lodging tax every single rental. I have all the stuff, you know, for safety cards and all these things and all that. A lot of this stuff feels like we're getting lost in it, but I have rentals, the underground rentals, the people that don't have to pay the business license fee, the people that are not paying the Airbnb to take it up for you, they're not getting all of it, which is cheating out the tourism bureau here. It's yeah, also yeah, it not fair to the motels more. because the motels have to get that 13% or the state's gonna come down on them. And so, no, an Airbnb or a short-term rental is very different than a motel room. I will agree on that, but it is still a short-term stay and it is still a lodging tax situation. So it's still that 13%. And until there's simply a basic regulation that says, if you wanna do this in the house, 
you need a business license, and you need to understand all the mechanisms to pay all three <coughs> sections of your tax, that you've got to know the percent the city's got to get, the county, and the tourist bureau, that you know that it's even 13%. Because I can't tell you people that I've argued that no, it's not 7%, that's just what we give the city. Um, the 11%, no, that's not right. The playing field when it comes to the just nuts and bolts, bottom line business, have your license, pay your taxes, is terribly misunderstood and not enforced. And I have lost rentals because literally, in the words of the client, the customer, the guest, whatever, I charge them too much in taxes. They could get the same exact bedroom for the same thousand dollars, but I charge too much in taxes. So they went with the other person. And this, that, is, this is a home you're living in? No, sir. Oh, okay. This, this is a, a property that I own for the purpose of short-term rental. And it's just really frustrating when you hit that wall to the point that somebody tells you, um, huh, no, we're not going with yours because theirs is cheaper because they get the 13% discount for you know sliding under the radar. Um, that's been my biggest thing. But then the rules that y'all have in here, some of them, you'll never enforce them. And the way this is written, it's complaint driven, which means that to have anybody act on it to enforce it, somebody else has to complain. And in my online comments to them, I did say that if they keep it this way and it says that all these people in NC basically are gonna have to black market, I will make it my personal life mission to give them every address I can come up with. Because I don't want to compete with the black market thing. All right, person. okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. We're good. It's just an so, opinion. We just yeah. listen to people. Anna, this way, we're minute. We got it. Yeah, I'm done. I just, I just, it's be fair. Thank you. Um, so I have sent my letter into the council of why I am in support of some type of regulation, and it's to level the playing field to get the revenue that the city needs to get. And then the short-term rentals are they're a phenomenon that is not going away. Like Uber and Lyft, I go places, and sometimes I stay in hotels. Sometimes I stay in bed and breakfast. Sometimes I rent the RBO. I've never done Airbnb, but that's, you know, I'm not opposed to it. But I utilize all of the sources for when I want to go somewhere to stay in an area. So we have had um, the RBA property, and my husband Greg reminded me it's been over 20 years we've had it in uh, at the coast, but we're real familiar with the RBA. Greg, for the only because he does all that. Um, but we've had rental property here too, and the comments that we got were so positive. We've had posted um, wedding parties, we've had graduation parties, we've had people for Thanksgiving, and I think ultimately, if the city can figure out how to regulate it, it levels the playing field, and it allows for, as we've been talking about, a way to have some complaint-driven consequences if people are violating or making having problems. So that's why I think they brought it. Thank you. For 20 till 7. One, one further comment on the property values. Uh, probably be good for the city to have short-term rentals because there's plenty of areas in this city that could use an upgrade and you would find that people would be moving in or people would be buying or able to buy because they can use Airbnb to help supplement their income to just move in. The other thing that could happen is that people could buy those houses like a gentleman here did, fix it up a little bit and, and be able to generate revenue relative to the price of the house. So, I mean, there's, the, the property value thing will be market driven. I don't think any of us, I live in the neighborhood that I would be renting my property in. Um, I'm not gonna, my, my incentive is actually to keep that neighborhood as nice as possible, right? Because I want my property values to go up. I want it to be a pleasant place to live. Um, and some of, these, some of the complaints I'm hearing are, you know, they have a party across the street with his family that's out on the front lawn having a hoedown every time Auburn plays football, right? So, you know, there's, it, <coughs> I'm not from here, obviously. So, um, <laughs> and, 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 uh, but you know, I mean, that happens in neighborhoods. This is normal behavior in neighborhoods. And if there is excessive problems, 
we have police, and we have other ways of enforcing these issues. I think the simple, fair regulations, reasonable, um, I think would be the you know approach to take. I have no problem getting a business license. I have businesses. I have no problem paying insurance. I do all that. So, you know, to think sometimes I think government sees these new things like Uber coming in as they, they see them as a threat, or they see you know there are businesses that are threatened by them. Existing businesses are threatened by them, and that's just life in the city, the big city. You know, it's a competition. It's a, it's America. This is what kind of capitalism happens. And the market does a very good job, I find, of regulating things like this. Thanks, sir. I, I think I think we're pretty much in agreement on a lot of things here. You know, what what I would, for me going forward, I'm looking for reasonable, common sense regulation. Without, you know, other cities can do this. Why can't we? We do this. We should be able to do this just as easily as any other city. So. Um, I'm all about finding good common ground, reasonable, and I, I am personally getting an overwhelming amount of feedback, much in the manner of, that we saw tonight about this, um, as it's written now, it's too restrictive. And, and I'm hearing that. So that you know. Now, uh, I mean, I, th I think I pretty much would agree with everything you said. It was definitely our experience when we hear directly from the citizens, and I'm lucky because I'm not an elected official. I'm just listening to what you guys are saying, and so uh, this was an education, and I and I think the majority of people here seem like this. Uh, the way it's written here is pretty restrictive, so I'm sure um, there's some things on the drawing board we have to look at. So. I want to thank everybody for sharing tonight. Thank you for everybody that came out tonight. As we talked about uh, procedurally, we're, we'll probably have a, I would imagine, a work session with the task force to kind of. Uh, take in the comments that we've got. Let, let me let you know too, for those that maybe didn't share or you've got someone that wasn't able to attend the meeting, we do have the ordinance that's posted online that you can provide commentary to. Uh, we have our uh, email addresses, mine and Bob's email addresses are available if you'd like to reach out. Um, Marcus, I think yours is available too. If you I believe it is, yeah. So I mean, if you, if you please, please provide feedback because this is the way that we're going to create an ordinance or whatever we're going to come from here in May is going to be based on feedback that we get. Um, I really appreciate everybody sharing their opinions and, and coming out tonight. Um, and again, I think procedurally we'll get together for a work session. Uh, changes that to be made to the ordinance will be published again. I anticipate we'll have another meeting similar to this to discuss what we've got and then present that to plan. So, um, Thank you very much, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you.